to one. Shelly throws down low. Markowski kicks it out to Jazz. Knocked away by Marshall. Seven to shoot. Six to shoot. Shelly for three. You betcha. Huskers take their first lead of the game with 30 seconds left. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are, indeed, a Wednesday night, our hump day edition of Sports on a full two hours coming your way. We're going to hear from the big dog, Jeremiah Searles, here in a little bit. He is, uh, we, we found him again after a little uh, absence. We're going to play a little bit of the sideline slice with Searles coming up later on this half hour. Fred Hoiberg, as Henry told you in the ticker, did have a press conference today. We'll play you some more clips from that as the Huskers have headed to Columbus, Ohio, where they will play the Buckeyes tomorrow night. And we'll also preview some of our upcoming games Husker baseball, Husker men's basketball at Ohio State game with KP, and we'll talk a little Husker softball with Nate Roars. They're getting ready for their home opener on Friday against the Wichita State Shockers. We had somebody, I think it might have been Art in Los Angeles the other night, asked about can we talk about the Big Ten tournaments and seeding and who gets buys and all that type of thing. So I thought, Jess, we'd just kind of lead off with that tonight. Wisconsin lost last night, which puts them into a tie with Nebraska right now. At 10 and 7, and for that four spot, and the top four teams get two days of buys. They get pushed all the way to the quarterfinal round, and Purdue's going to be one of them. Illinois probably has the number two seed uh, locked up, but then it gets tight. You've got Northwestern, who's, as Henry mentioned, playing right now at Maryland. They're 10 and 6, and then the Huskers in Wisconsin, 10 and 7 each. Nebraska's got a real chance of being in that top four. In fact, if they could, t- if I think if they win two of the last three, I think they might even get up to the number three seed in that thing. And if you have designs on winning this tournament, and I don't see why the men couldn't win this tournament. I mean, they've already beaten Purdue and they've beaten Wisconsin and had a great game with Illinois. If you want to win it, the more buys you get, the better your chances are. You know, I said this time and time again on the show, but when they are playing their best basketball, they can compete with just about anybody in the country or anybody in the country. Yeah. They're hard to guard. You've got a lot of different guys that can contribute. And as uh, we're going to hear Kim Pavelka talking about, and we've certainly noticed here down the stretch the last four games, they can really lock it up defensively, which is a big key as well. But, uh, you know, looking at Northwestern, they have a, what they have Minnesota at Michigan State and Iowa left not, after tonight. Not good. And so, yeah, I mean, shoot, you never and know. They're losing right now to Maryland on the road. So, and, and it's kind of like what we're talking about with the women. They have put themselves in a position that if they win on Sunday, it doesn't matter what happens with anybody else, they will have that four seed locked up. Just go take care of business, do what you can do, and win, and you don't have to worry about what anyone else is doing. Very true. And, and tomorrow will be a challenge, and, and Henry played that clip from the coach saying Ohio State's won two big games since they let their coach go um, a week or ten days ago. They've won uh, back-to-back games, including being Purdue, uh, so they will be a challenge. So that's the bigger thing Nebraska's got to do. It's way more clear-cut on the women's side, as you just referenced, for the Huskers, they're either going to be the four or the five seed. It's, it's, there's not a lot of fluidity in that. And it all Illinois holds the key to everything because they play Sparty tomorrow night. If uh, Michigan State wins, and that would make mean Nebraska has to win Sunday over Illinois to hold on to the four seed. Adding in the fact that Michigan State has to win their last game as well. And I, I'm not sure who they play, but it's but way think, more clear cut for that. But with Nebraska having the head-to-head over Michigan State, even if Michigan State wins out, Nebraska and Nebraska wins. Yeah, Nebraska controls it. Yes, yeah. but if um, if Michigan State loses any of the two that's left, it doesn't matter right. what Nebraska could lose because they're tied, but because they have the head-to-head right. that, you know, as long as Nebraska wins on Sunday, it does not matter what anybody else does. But when you start talking about the seating and the – NCAA tournament, and we would love to see the women's team get off that 8-9 seed right. and just chat with Matt Coatney about this, and, and they need a, a put-together run if they want to improve that seeding. They need some more wins to bolster that resume to be able to get off that 8-9 seed. It's a terrible seed. You know, it, it's almost like you'd rather be a 10 seed than an Absolutely. 8 or 9 Absolutely, dropping seed. down one more. Um, but, you know, you, it's a tough matchup there in the first round with the 8-9 seed, and then you have, if you, if you win, you're going to play a number one overall seed. So would like to see Nebraska maybe try to win some games, put together some, some other wins, and string together some, some of their best basketball here for the committee going into it when they look at it so that they can maybe get up to that 6 seed and get off, or 7 seed, 
I think he was saying that it'd be hard probably for them to get to the six seed, but certainly the seven is doable. But they've, they've got to win some games here down the stretch. Men's the same thing. You know, this winning a Big Ten tournament can do wonders for your sure seeding, could. right? Yeah. So, and as you mentioned, if you want to make a run at it, it is really hard to do playing four games, playing five games. So you cut back on that, and then you put together three really good days, and a lot of good things could happen for you going into the NCAA tournament. Oscar women have that road game in Illinois. That would be a nice one to get to kind of just add a little another road victory to the resume before going to Minneapolis. It does look like Nebraska and Michigan State, regardless of the seed, are on a collision course to play in the quarterfinal round. It's just who plays has to play Thursday. Who gets the day off Thursday to play Friday? But it looks like I mean I don't I'm not I don't think I don't think the 12 seed could beat either Nebraska or Michigan State on the women's side. So those two are probably on a collision course. Yeah, it's it's a lot different with the men and women when you look at the bottom half of the league. And look, Rutgers came in here and and beat Nebraska yeah. here at PBA, but. The women's teams at the bottom are not very good, whereas you know some of the men's teams on the bottom, a lot of them have shown that they can knock off some of the best teams. It's it's just just a little bit different. And yeah, we mentioned last night are kind of tiers. Yeah. In the women, you've got the top three or four, and maybe you throw Michigan State in there and make it five, and then you got a couple that are okay, and then there's some bottom feeders that aren't very good this year. Yeah. So. I just I don't know if any of those teams will have a chance to pull off any upsets in the Big Ten tournament. Agreed. And a lot yeah. of them, it, you watch them now, and some of those teams. And yes, that's why that's why the tournament time and the conference tournament time is special because it allows for teams. It gives a chance to teams that are not going to get into the NCAA tournament. Hey, here's an opportunity. If you win this tournament, you can get in. But you're starting to see some of these teams that have not had a good season start to look it right in their games. It um, sometimes takes a little while for that to unfold, but I think you're starting to see some of the little bit of the dopper downs and uh, the fatigue of a, an unsuccessful season or not quite the standard of, of what a program goes into the season hoping to do it. You're starting to see that. And so it just, you know, it's hard to, to make a run when you don't have a lot of momentum going into a tournament. So it starts, the women's tournament starts a week from today up in Minneapolis. Both the men and women are in Minneapolis, and they're already talking about future sites for the Big Ten tournament when you add those four schools, the two Los Angeles schools in Oregon and Washington next year. My guess is the tournament's going to bounce around a little bit, and it may even go out west every now and then. Maybe it goes to Vegas for a year, or maybe you put it in Los Angeles for one year, uh, but I don't know that it's going to stay kind of in the eastern half all the time. More times than not, yes, but and I don't think that's a bad thing to move that tournament I around. think it's, uh, it's a cool thing to do, yeah. and it gives the – Teams an opportunity to play in some different venues, and the now that it's a coast to coast type of conference, you can allow for all across the country those fans to be able to witness and and get to get in there and and see the team. So I think it's a good thing to rotate. Yeah, I do. And uh, Shane in the chat room is saying, not the baseball tournament, and, and that's a different animal because of our love affair around here with college baseball. I don't know that it could go anywhere else but Omaha and draw anywhere close to what it does here. But we'll see. I mean, we'll see what those four schools want to do when they come into the league next year. It's also just so different, too, just because basketball, that's what it is. It rotates. Everything Correct. rotates. And it, that's how it's always been. Whereas right. with some of the baseball and softball, like it's – I know the softball in the Big Ten, it rotates, it but in Campus the Big sites. 12, when I came for the Big 12, it was always in Oklahoma City. And when Nebraska won it, I think if it was in Oklahoma City, right, when they won the yeah. conference, it, you know, it was always in Oklahoma City, and the Women's College World Series is always in Oklahoma City, but for the basketball, it's just always it's how it's always so, done, and, and the attendance hasn't... Um, it hasn't affected the attendance one way or another, really, depending on the city that it's in. I have, have not heard anything about football. It's been in Indianapolis, really, for the last, since they went to the divisions. I, I think they'll probably move that. I, my guess is football will probably move to some different sites. Um, you know, I don't know that uh, there's a real an hankering to have an outdoor game. You know, put it in, Unless it's in L.A. That, But that stadium's got, yeah, it's got kind of a bit of roof over it, but... You, you know, I, I, there's been some talk about do you play in Chicago at the, where the Bears play, which would be outdoors. I, I don't know that a lot of fans would love that, but I, some I some know. of the fan bases wouldn't care. Wouldn't care. You're right. Some of them would. Yeah. 
The yeah. ones that are coming in from the West probably would, would wouldn't not, mind that. Would not like that at all. <laughs> so hopefully that's a problem for the Huskers and Matt Rule that we're talking about them getting into the conference football title game in the near future. Speaking of football, the big dog was uh, Jessica caught up with him. They recorded a new podcast, the Sideline Slice with Searles. We're going to have a little bit of that coming your way here in just a couple of minutes. Also want to hear from you as well, 402-413-2400. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're also, and if you're in the chat room, you want to find, fire us off a text, we're going to be naming our BMO Athlete of the Month. This is our last show for February, because tomorrow night we have men's basketball, the last night of the month. So we're going to name our BMO Athlete of the Month. Love to hear your thoughts about who that should be uh, from the Cornhusker standpoint. All that coming up tonight here on the show. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team, and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammates mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Com. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. 
Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you Wednesday night. No show tomorrow. Husker basketball as they take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Early tip, 5.30. Uh, so 4.30 pregame coverage for Kent and Jake on the call tomorrow night. Well, Jeremiah Searles, he's been... Uh, Kind of a little absent from Lincoln, doing his other job as a sports agent the last couple of months. But we finally lassoed him and just sat down to record another edition of the podcast Sideline Slice with Searles. Here's a bit of that. One of the other fun storylines that it's been to follow over the last couple of months, Nash Hutmaker putting on his wrestling singlet. He's dropped a bunch of weight. What have, uh, what's been your perspective of that and watching him uh, hit the wrestling mat where he's pretty dang good, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a monster. Uh, I love it. You know, I saw him be so dominant last year from a nose guard position, which is not somewhere where you see usually a dominant performance come. And when he first ran out there in that first match against Wyoming, I was like, is this the same guy? <laughs> it looks like he lost like 50 pounds. Like, but he still looked strong. He looked agile. And, you know, going through the pre-draft process, talking with teams right now, you'll be amazed how many teams love d linemen and O-linemen that have wrestling backgrounds. Mm. They, they love it, right? Like, oh, this dude was a wrestler. A means he's tough. No, B, he understands the leverage. He'll fight through things. So it's a huge de- or asset for him moving forward, especially as he's going to chase the NFL. And, you know, just losing some of that weight and getting some of that quickness back and just kind of refreshing those tools that he hadn't used since uh, high school, I think it's going to really pay dividends for him in the fall. You thought he was a, a tad heavy, right? Yeah, you know, and I think that was part of the scheme, too. You know, you want those big nose guards that can eat the double teams and free up the linebackers to run around and make a gazillion tackles. But if he wants to play at the next level, he has to be able to pass rush. It's a pass rush league, right? You have to be able to get to the quarterback at the next level. And so if he can drop 10 pounds, 15 pounds, and continue that explosiveness and that power that he has, and that's one thing I love about wrestling, you don't lose your power. Right? It's not like when you – I remember when I played basketball in high school, I'd cut like 15, 20 pounds, but it'd be all muscle because I'd just be run, 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 run. Right? You just got to go. But with wrestling, you got to keep that power and that strength and understanding how to fight guys in a tight box window. And so he's just going to continue to get better at that. And if he can drop 10 pounds and rush the passer, it's only going to be better for the Huskers and eventually better for him as he moves on to the next level. So it won't be hard for him to put that weight back on, right? I guess. Oh, it's Take super it easy to process. pick up the fork. It's super easy just to pick up the fork and eat. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what that's what it comes down to. I mean, when you're working as hard as these guys are and I see the videos that Corey Campbell puts out and I see how hard these dudes are working day in and day out. If you're eating properly and fueling your body properly and luckily you're at a place like Nebraska where food is not a problem. Right. If you're at a smaller school and I deal with guys like this all the time, like FIU or an FAU type of thing where they're like, man, the nutrition's just not there for me to gain the weight that I need to gain the right way. Luckily, Nebraska is a top tier program that you need more food. All you got to do is ask, right? And there's plenty of opportunities. So if he's eating and fueling himself the right way, he's going to be able to put that weight back on no problem. Okay, so you, you said something earlier that I wanted to, to circle back on. You said you typically don't see nose tackles dominate. Why is that? Yeah, you know, a lot of the times is because it's a thankless position. Right? A nose guard's job is not to get a ton of TFLs, and it's not his job to be this super disruptive force. His job is to eat up the guard, eat up the center, 
plug the middle and then have everyone else rally because that's where they can gash on the runs. And, you know, so many times last year you saw Nash getting so much push from that center position where he was being that disruptive force. And then usually you put the center in pass protection. You're like, hey, block big fatty. We're going to get out here to the edges and help with these werewolves coming off the edge. And if you singled Nash up one-on-one with the center this year, the dudes had no chances. Like he was just bowling dudes over. He was showing really good push-pull techniques. And so many times we saw him get to the quarterback but not be able to finish. Right, like he disrupted, he got him off his spot. That's great, but the next evolution in his game is beat the defender in front of you, finish with the quarterback on the ground. And so when you talk about dominance, like he was great in the run game, didn't get moved, did everything he asked. The next piece of him is just finishing up in the pass game too. So we talked a lot about him really from the start of the season, mm-hmm. throughout the entire season, arguably the MVP. I thought he was the MVP, yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I think I voted for him for MVP of the defense throughout the entire year as most consistent player. Yeah, I think so too. I, I'm with you on that one. What was it that separated him? Why was he, what were the things that you were seeing, and especially now that you've been able to go and review, that made him so much better this year, that made him so good last season? Yeah, first of all, his conditioning level was excellent. Mm -hmm. They asked him to play a lot of snaps, and really that whole defense played a lot of snaps last year. And for a big guy to play that number of snaps means that he put in the work in the summer to be at that high level of conditioning. And that's a good thing, but I'd also like to see him not have to play that many snaps this year. You know, if you can have him be dominant for 40 snaps instead of semi-dominant for 65, I'll take the dominant of 40 any day of the week, right? And that just comes with developing depth of that interior line position. But I think he really started understanding the leverage of the position, understanding where to attack the weak points of, hey, if it's a double team here, who's the guy do I want to attack? Do I want to go after the guard or do I want to have to go after the center? Where's my leverage? Where's my help? And just playing fast and free and just trusting his eyes and trusting his feet and going. You know, I think early in his career, he's kind of feeling his way around, which most people do as a young player. But last year, it seemed like everything clicked for him. Like, everything fell in a click. The game slowed down. And I know people hear players say that a lot, but it's a real thing. The game can absolutely, where when you're first out there as a young guy, you're like, it's kind of like the scene from Talladega Nights. Where you're like, what was that? Were those the other cars? Like, as they're flying by you. But then as you get older, everything slows down, and it's like, it's like classical music in front of you, right? You can just read everything that's coming. You see it. You see. You shoot your gun. You go. And I think that really did happen for him, and I'm excited to see what it even looks like as it even slows down more for him going into his senior season. Okay, another storyline to get to since, uh, well, to, that's happened since we've had an episode of The Slice. Glenn Thomas is hired to be the co-offensive coordinator and is going to coach the quarterbacks. Um, what's your, your take on that and the fact that he's going to take over the, the quarterbacks? Marcus Hatterfield is still going to be a, the play caller and they're going to figure all that out and how that works. But just maybe alleviating the quarterback position off of Marcus Satterfield's plate, what does that do? Yeah, you know, having a designated quarterback coach is really important, especially when you bring in a guy like Dylan Rayola, right? Young, raw, all the talent in the world, but let's clean him up technically and let's get him playing this offense the way you want him played. And for Satterfield, that's a big undertaking to take on if you're also the offensive coordinator and you're tasked with developing this young, brand new, five-star, great talent that's in your room. And you don't want to have that. You don't want to have be a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, right? So you ruled it a great job of saying, hey, let's separate these two. Sat, focus on this offense, man. Find out what our identity is through spring ball. Throw everything out there, and let's see what we can do and be the best of your ability of calling plays for the right players that we have. And then you go over on the other side, and you're like, hey, Glenn, coach this dude up. You've been in the NFL. You've been around great quarterbacks. Get him technically sound, right? Technically sound. Don't allow him to get away with some of the stuff he got away with in high school because he was so God-gifted. That's not going to work at this level, and it's not going to work at the next level, which is where we project Dylan Rayla wanting to go, right? So let's get him from the ground up, base fundamentals, what we need, and install things the right way with him over time. And I think the combination of those two things can be really good for this Husker offense. Coach Thomas had worked with Coach Rule before, but he spent a long time in the NFL what what can that experience do when you go back to college? Just some of the things working with NFL quarterbacks that you can implement to the college quarterback. Yeah, you know, when you're in the NFL, 
as a coach, you're as much of a sponge as anyone else because you have offensive, different offensive coordinators that come in, different coaches, different quarterbacks that you've worked with from all around the league that all have little nuggets of how they prepare or how they do it or what their footwork looks like or what their release time is. And so as a coach, you're a sponge taking all those things in so that you're putting more tools in your tool belt, tool belt when you're going to be a coach. And so bringing that back down to the college level, you know, sometimes when a quarterback gets in the NFL, he kind of is who he is at times, right? He's been developed for a long time. You can't change a bunch mechanically or change how he takes his drops or those type of things in the NFL when a guy's been stuck in his ways forever, and that's okay. He's in the NFL. But when you come back down to the college level and you have someone coming directly out of high school, this is where you really get to cut your teeth as a coach, right? This is where you really get to prove your mettle of, hey, this is my baby. This is my project. I've got two young quarterbacks coming in here that are really good players. Let's develop them my way and show everyone that I know how to develop young players into becoming superstars. And that's what you kind of bring from the NFL is all the experience that you've had at the pinnacle of the sport. Can you come to college and coach and create the next generational type talent? I hate using that word. It's been overused a billion times this year. But coach the next talent that everyone's talking about being the next guy. And when you have a guy like Dylan Rayola in your offensive room, that's what you want to be. I want to coach the next guy that when we're talking about the 2028 draft or the 2029 draft, like it's, hey, it's Dylan Rayola and Caleb Williams and whatever it is, right? Like that's what you want to hope for, and that's what they brought Glenn Thomason to do. Okay, let's uh, also talk the off season right now. What are the goals? What is a football team trying to accomplish during this time right now? Bigger, faster, stronger, baby. Winter conditioning. That's you like what it's this time, right? About. Oh, I loved winter conditioning. It's crazy. I really did. It was hard. It's brutal. You're grinding, but you're not prepping for anything, right? You don't have a game on Saturday or you're not waiting training camps, not this giant looming cloud that you can see over the horizon. Like it's nothing but just weight room, field cold tub over and over and over again and you grow so much with your teammates during this time because you're fighting through adversity and you're fighting through all the hard things that are going on and you're really starting to see hey who are my leaders in this room who are the dudes that are falling behind that i either have to pull with me or say hey man if you're not going to be on this train get off right there's a lot of that going on right now but bigger faster stronger is the name of the game in winter conditioning because this is the one time where you're not prepping any football stuff you're just truly working on getting your body ready for the season that's ahead Second time these guys are going through the mat drills, which are very, very hard, and I'm sure you've seen some of the video, but I, I feel like we should reach out to Corey Campbell and see if he could put you through a mat drill workout. Oh, please no. My <laughs> body's already just falling apart. I mean, I, my shoulder's probably torn. I got no ACL in my left knee. I wouldn't make it through half of a mat drill. <laughs> I wouldn't make it through a quarter of a mat drill. I'd put a whistle in my mouth. That way I can help. I can blow the whistle and yell at the kids to run. Put, I, I can do that. I'm trying to find somebody to do it so that they can come on and talk about how hard it is. So I'm maybe no Cole. one can. Maybe I'm Cole can you. do it. <laughs> maybe Cole. Yeah, we'll put we'll get someone young out there. They have to be under the age of 23. <laughs> oh, you know, during this time too, you talk about the weight room, but then you see a lot of guys that are going to throw and getting extra passes in. The quarterbacks developing the chemistry and running routes with the wide receivers and the defensive backs. But if you're an offensive lineman, what are you doing during this time of the year? Because it's not like you're playing seven on seven or anything like that. So what are the things that you're doing outside of the weight room to improve your game? Yeah, you know, with the new rules, it's hard because you can't hit each other, right? You can't. And being an offensive line is a contact sport. But what I would focus on, and it's really kind of what I put my rookies through, is getting back to being in complete control of your footwork and control of your body while you're doing the fundamentals. Right, so when you're taking your pass sets, you're not just going through the motions like, oh, I want to get 20 pass sets in today. Like, no, I want to get 20 controlled, perfect pass sets in today so that when it comes to real life bullets, I've drilled this over and over again that then I can start working on that because I'm in such control of my body. Or, hey, maybe I really struggled with footwork last year on the backside of a run play, right? Drilling that over and over again with no one in front of you until you get it right. So that, again, once spring ball rolls around, then you can practice all that work. And so it's so much about what you do individually this time of year because you're not working with each other very much there's not a ton you can do physically of like double teams and that type of thing it's really a time to reflect on you and what you need to work on coming off of last year what your coach wants to see from you during spring ball and then implementing that in the extra work time of hey i'm gonna take 20 extra sets today tomorrow i'm gonna do 10 backside zones and then the next time i do five front side zones and just having a plan put together of doing your footwork 
excuse me, doing your footwork every single day because you can't take eight weeks off of being an offensive lineman. It doesn't work that way. It's a craft you have to perfect on a daily basis. The footwork thing, is that something you, you continue to work on throughout the season, or is it something you do off-season? How much are you honing in on that maybe when you're watching film? Yeah, it, it, you work on it every day. Like in-season, off-season, it doesn't matter, but you build the basics of it's going to be hard to change your footwork mid-season. Like it's just something that it's ingrained in you. It's as simple as, you know, I tell people, like when you write your name with your pen, right, it's like, hey, I'm going to sign my name with my pen in cursive. Well, it's the exact same way when you sign it with your finger. Right? It's just ingrained in you how you do things. And so you can't just change that all of a sudden. But what you can do is take control of that right now when there's no pads on so that you can apply it when pads get put on. Right? You apply all that work you did with the body control. And then as you go, yes, you're constantly going to need to correct it because it's amazing when all of a sudden there's a body across from you, dude's brains break. Like, they go haywire. And it's like, what is that? I haven't seen that in six weeks. It's like, well, I had to get there. It's like, well, you stepped under yourself, dummy. Like, you got to get going. And so it's just amazing how things can go haywire all the time. But the guys that have mastered the ability to control themselves and control their bodies are the ones that can apply it much quicker once the, when the pads come on. Where does the footwork rank in the most important skill sets of an offensive lineman? Ooh, probably, probably second. I think second. I think number one is your hands. Right, number one is is your hands, and college offensive linemen are notorious for not using their hands like weapons. Why? Literal weapons. I don't know. It drives me banana balls. It is so hard to watch when some guy doesn't strike and he's just like headbutting or catching, and then you turn on the NFL and these dudes are trying to punch the living soul out of people, and it's like, dude, use your hands. They're your best weapon. They're your number one asset. And, you know, it's just uh, it's a hard thing to get a hold of because you have to have a lot of confidence to throw your hands and not be afraid to put them out there and get them knocked down and pull them back and throw them back out there. So hands is by far number one. And then your footwork is number two because you got to work those two things hand in hand. You can't have slow feet, quick hands. You can't have quick hands, slow feet. So those, t those two combinations of footwork and throwing your hands are the biggest pieces for offensive linemen. Searles brought his A game for this episode. He looks good, too. He's really trimmed up. I mean, it looks like he's taking care of himself. Yeah, he's got a haircut. His beard is groomed. Sometimes he comes on and it's a little bit of a, a mess. But, um, no, that is just a portion of the full episode of the Sideline Slice presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official pizza of the Huskers. The full episode will be out first thing tomorrow morning. Great. So you can listen to that. Um, but I just always learned so much from him. And... Every time, I mean, I've done how many episodes with him over the last three years, and it just, every every episode, I just learned so much. But he he, he brought it for this episode. He did. There was a lot to talk about. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had him on for a long time, and a lot of things have happened. So good to hear that. And so tomorrow, it drops. Yep. Tomorrow tomorrow morning, you can check that out on our YouTube channel and then on our uh, wherever you listen to your audio, audio podcast. Fantastic. Folks, contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. 402-413-2400. We're back to name our BMO Athlete of the Month of February. We'll do that next. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Not all companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Not all companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Not all companies building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the kino parlor is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. 
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation Solutions, crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Wednesday night on our text line, John in Omaha said, uh, I'm interested in a comment that you all made about the Husker women, how being a 10 seed would almost be better than an 8 or 9. Can you explain that for us? So it's, it's less about that first round matchup, which you have to win, you have to take care of business, and more about who you would face in the second round. So the 8-9 winner advances to play the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament, one of their, the four number one seeds. And Greg and I have talked about this. There's a very big drop off, we think, between the number one seeds, like the top couple of teams, but especially South Carolina, which right now, in a couple of the bracket projections, Nebraska is an 8 9 at South Carolina, you don't which want that's that. a team, that's the last team you want to face in this deal. Right. So if you are a 6 or if you're a 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, a lot of those teams in the first round are pretty close, right? I think between 7 and 11, they match up. They're, they're pretty close in, in talent. So it's, it's a similar matchup, but then if you advance, you wouldn't, you'd get off, you'd avoid playing the number one seed in the second round. Well done. That's, that's exactly right. You just, the 8, 9 seeds to me are a curse. Not, not that you couldn't upset the number one overall seed in the country, but it's hard. It's just like the statistics are crazy they're, rare. They're, they're really hard. Yeah, particularly on the women's side when you're playing in their gym. Yes. Because yeah. all the ones will be ho hosts. The men, they go neutral site, so you have a little bit more chance to upset. And a lot of people in the arena will start rooting for the underdog 
You don't get that in the women's side because you're on a campus site. Yeah, and I, I just think like if you're a 10 and you're facing a 6 or an 11 facing a 7, it, it's a pretty similar matchup to, very, very you know, similar. between the 8, 9. It just, they're pretty close. So it, it doesn't really matter as much about the first round. It's more about who you would face in the second round to give your, yourself a better chance to advance in the tournament. So, John, I hope that cleared up why we were kind of saying that in an earlier segment of the show. All right, time for us. This is our last show of February. Tomorrow night's last day of Tomorrow's the last day of the month. It's a leap year, so it's the 29th tomorrow. We do not have a show. Men's basketball tomorrow night is at Ohio State. So we need to pick out our BMO Athlete of the Month. My short list, Billy Andrews, who got named this week as the NCAA Softball Player of the Week. Jazz Shelley, who earlier this month was named the NCAA Women's Basketball Player of the Week after the Huskers had that big upset of Iowa. And then I've got those track athletes that won Big Ten Indoor titles, Tyus Wilson in the high jump, McKaylin Moore in the triple jump, and mine, the clerk on the women's side on the shot put. Those were kind of people on my list. I see uh, Crypto King wants us to mention Juwan Gary. Rightfully so. Juwan's had a really good run. But there's been games where Juwan wasn't really good. It was Casey that took over. So a little hard for me to pick just one men's player. It's, it's the same discussion and argument we had when we were trying to figure out the volleyball when we were talking about who who could be the volleyball athlete of the month because they're so balanced and they have so many different players that contribute to the wins and and they have like a it's a it's almost every night is a different leading score it rotates almost every night it's crazy but it, they're just so balanced and everybody is is key to that team and but yes i i think in that month you can certainly point to i think you couldn't go wrong with a, a number of those guys in on that team i also think billy andrews would be a a good person on that list but i'm going to save my billy vote for when she takes the um the program record for career home runs which is coming she's yeah. like six away from yeah. it or seven so i'm going to save my vote for that for billy for that i think i'm going to counter your jazz shelley with alexis markowski because jazz was the national player of the week for the iowa win but none of that is possible. This team isn't looking at an NCAA tournament berth without Alexis Markowski and what she has done. Unbelievable. She's now, I think, two away from the season record and three mm -hmm. away from the career record for double-doubles. And they've won five of their last six. They dropped the first game in February, and then they won five of their last six. And they are an NCAA tournament team because of that performance. So um, I'll say Alexis Markowski in that. And... Um, McKaylin Moore for me because he wins his first Big Ten title. He's the triple jump and he's going to go compete in nationals and I get to chat with him tomorrow. So. Oh, great. Um, also, somebody in the chat room said, Joe, don't forget wrestling. How about yeah. Jacob Vandy? And he's been a really cool story, the 133 pounder for the Huskers. Ridge got beat the other day, so I would probably take Ridge off the line. Jacob has not been undefeated this month, but he's had some really good wins for the Huskers. Again, that's kind of hard to pick just one wrestler. Uh, obviously for the whole year. Has only Pinto been? No, because he lost at Penn he, State, right? He lost at Penn State, yeah. And Jacob Vandy won at Penn State. He did, which was a huge win early in that, that duel, and the Huskers were right there with them through about the first five matches. I have so. a feeling we're going to be mentioning wrestling the next couple of months, or, well, at least in March, March. because I think a couple, few of them have a chance to win a Big Ten title and certainly compete for a national title. So, um, so you're kind of more Michaela and more. I, you were convincing me on Alexis because I think Alexis is the MVP of the women's team. Jazz maybe gets a few more headlines, but I'm with you. I think Alexis is kind of the whole key to that team. Well, and, and Cotney said it after the Iowa win. Look, it was that week, that moment that Jazz, it, it was a huge win to upset Iowa in front of a sold out crowd. But, um, you know, it's kind of that moment was so big that that's why Jazz got, and Jazz is unbelievable. But I, I interviewed Jazz last week, and she sat here and said, Alexis Markowski is everything to us. Yeah. We are not where we are without her. And so I think for me, for her work, her job that she's done, and this is with everybody doing everything they can to, to slow her down and trying to throw everything at the book, in the book to try to get her not to dominate the boards, and yet... They still are one of the best rebounding teams in the in the Big Ten, and she's one of the best rebounders in the country. I don't think she gets enough credit. I've said it over and over again. So I, I think for me, I'm going to go with Alexis Markowski this month. Okay. 
And the one thing with McCown and Moore, the men finished second in the Big Ten indoor. That's probably one of the better team finishes we've had all year long. Obviously, a volleyball did win the conference, but they finished second just four points behind Wisconsin. But I'm totally fine with Alexis Markowski being our BMO Athlete of the Month. BMO is a proud sponsor of the Huskers Radio Network. We're committed to helping our customers make real financial progress. To learn more, visit BMO.com. We're back to wrap up hour one next. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Purchasing your next car, truck, or SUV from Woodhouse Ford is easier than ever thanks to our streamlined buying process. Shop our current inventory and offers going on now and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford today. Save up to $7,000 off MSRP on the 2023 Ford Explorer. With approved credit, $299 dock fee due at signing. Vehicle is a retired courtesy loaner. Stop number T230335. Offer expires 229-2024. See dealer for details. Husker fans, if you're looking for a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding and provides flexibility, your local insurance agency is hiring. No matter your skills or interests, there are opportunities for you in the insurance industry. Explore the many ways you can use your skills to protect your community by checking out the IIAN job board. Find your calling and be a part of an industry that makes a difference. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. Still the dinner hour, right? This would be a good time to tell you the Dorothy Lynch homestyle. Light and lean dressing. Endless flavorabilities. Final segment of Hour 1 of Sports Island here on a Wednesday night. As tomorrow night, the Oscar men will be in Columbus, Ohio, set to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. They've gone to the half at Maryland on the men's side, Northwestern leading the uh, Terps 29 to 24 and Henry will update all the scores a couple of, including a couple of women's Big 10 games going on tonight uh, that are happening also a big game in the Big 12 on the women's side Texas and Oklahoma that could be a battle for first place in the uh, in the Big 12 Texas and we mentioned this the other night a lot of uh, a lot of people have them as a one seed on the women's side I'm not sure I'm sold on Texas being a one seed but I'm not on the committee they're not asking me I feel like a lot of the, especially on the women's side, a lot of those big name teams that have made runs and been there get a little bit of a favor, favorable Agreed. seed. They sometimes get seated where you, I don't know, like maybe they aren't as good, but they've, they've been there, they've done that, and they've proven that they historically are a team that can make runs and are good programs that I think sometimes they get a little bit more of a nod. Great news to report to you from Duke, and I know there's a lot of Duke basketball fans around here. Do we have any more of those now that we've gotten rid of? Like, uh, there's, Damon's a Carolina guy. Andrew's Duke. What do you Andrew, Andrew yeah. is Duke. The young guy that got hurt in the uh, court storm the other day that caused such a big uproar, he's going to play tonight. So it's mm. really good news that he was hurt that bad. That he he made play. such an uproar. It's all we heard about. Right? For like three days. Oh, my God, this kid's it's season's over. He's playing tonight. Yeah. 
Oh, the dramatic. Philip Gowski from uh, Duke. Yeah, I said, hey, look, his ankle's a little sore, but he's going to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. Really good deal. Uh, there was a bad incident last night. They had to haul the Texas Texas Tech men's game out in Lubbock. Texas got a big road win. They they had to stop the game for a while. Fans were throwing stuff on the court. They had to haul some fans out of the game. That's over the top. That that's inexcusable to me. You go to a college sporting event, you can't control yourself as a fan. Texas Tech fans are me. I'm telling you, I've been everywhere that I've been in the Big Ten, and everywhere I've been in the Big Twelve. West Virginia, they're pretty nice until you get in the stadium. And they're, you know, and they, I'm sure Coach Hoiberg can talk about this too, but when you're in the venue, they can be a little bit, but Texas Tech fans are just mean all the time. And they're crazy and they like their beverages. Uh huh. And they, yeah, they, and they hate Texas. Right. That's so a big part of it. it. It, they're bonkers. Yeah. They're one of the, to me, the meanest. Worse slash worse fan bases, and I'm sure that because Texas is leaving to the SEC, that's probably the last time they'll oh, ever yeah. go to Lubbock. So they're probably the fans like this is our last chance to yell and scream at the Longhorns. Unless they try to schedule some, maybe I just don't think Texas will go play them anymore. Yeah, I think Texas thinks Texas Tech is beneath them. Yeah. Oh no, I think you're right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, one hour in the books. Coming up next hour, we're going to hear some clips from Fred Hoiberg's press conference today. We're also going to hear from Kent Pavelka. Uh, Nate Rohr, Ben McLaughlin, as they preview their upcoming games. Baseball plays tomorrow afternoon at 1 against College of Charleston, the first of four. Oscar Sapa will have their home opener Friday night, late afternoon, 5.30, at Bowling against Wichita State. Also, Missouri in town. They're ranked nationally. It'll be a challenging weekend for Ron Ravel's team and obviously Oscar basketball tomorrow night. So we'll hear from Coach Hoiberg and Kent Pavelko. That's going to be a double dip of talking some men's hoops next hour. Cool stuff. You've been kind of doing this um, on these Fridays that I've been out on the road with baseball. People love this stuff. Yeah, how it's just not very often. There's a short period where all of our sports are, and all of our radio sports are, are going at the same time. And so it's, it's kind of fun. And it, it also makes it a little bit easier for me also to go into the weekend knowing what to expect and, and uh, getting a preview of the matchup. So I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it. I think people like hearing from those guys. So. Excited to, we'll play a little bit of it here tonight. Fantastic. Come back, hour two on the other side. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Experience luxury car buying like never before at Genesis of Southwest Omaha. Browse our full range of SUVs or our lineup of exceptional sedans, offering unparalleled elegance and sophistication. Plus, right now, lease the 2024 Genesis GV80 2.5 Turbo Standard for $669 per month for 36 months and 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, tax, title, and license extra. First payment $5,999 down plus $299 dock fee due at signing. Security deposit waived. Offer expires February 29th, 2024. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Huskers. Husker fans across America's heartland. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com.
Good evening, I'm Henry Goodwin, and our sports sticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Earlier today, Coach Hoiberg held a press conference with the media ahead of the game tomorrow against Ohio State. He was asked about the Buckeyes and how dangerous they are. Here's what the coach had to say. There are two Big Ten men's basketball games tonight. Northwestern has the edge at halftime against Maryland in College Park. The Wildcats lead 29-24. And at 8, Minnesota takes on number 13, Illinois, at the State Farm Center in Champaign. In Big Ten women's basketball, the second-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes are level at 22 apiece against the Michigan Wolverines at halftime in Columbus. Penn State and Purdue are also in a tight game. The Nittany Lions lead 53-52 with six minutes left in the third. Finally, at 8, the 6th-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes head to Minneapolis to take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Our sports sticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. The pump fake by Mass, step back three on the way, got it, got it, got it, got it! Holy smokes, holy cow, the Flying Dutchman with a big three to tie it at 65. And Andrews lines toward right, and it's over the head of Medellin and rolling all the way to the wall. Billy on her way to second, not stopping there. The car's relay from short right field is wide of the mark. Billy Andrews with a leadoff triple. Brian Webb with the 3-0 pitch, drilled into center field. Long run again for Verdusco, onto the track, looking up, and it is gone. Home run, Josh Karen's second home run of the night. This one a three-run blast to right center field, and Nebraska now leads it 9-1. Chili throws down low. Markowski kicks it out to Jazz. Knocked away by Marshall. Seven to shoot. Six to shoot. Shelly for three. You betcha. Huskers take their first lead of the game with 30 seconds left. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And we're back. Hour number two. Sports on here on a Wednesday night. Again, no show tomorrow. We'll have that uh, game Henry was talking about. Huskers and the Ohio State Buckeyes. From Columbus, early start, 5.30, so pregame coverage, 4.30. So a lot of you will be leaving work, driving home and listening to Kent and Jake. We're going to hear from Kent later this hour, a little weekend preview of some of the matchups with men's basketball, baseball, and softball. We'll talk some uh, women's basketball with Matt Cotney on our Friday show following Husker baseball at uh, College of Charleston. So, But first, uh, the head coach met with the media today. Huskers, remember, played the Buckeyes here in Lincoln back in January, and that was the night that Rink Mass just, it was the Rink Mass game. He hit, what do you have, 34 or something, I think, in that game against Ohio State? It was like 34, 35 points. Yeah, he, he was unbelievable. He was huge. But obviously, a lot has changed with the Buckeyes. They let their coach go a few weeks ago. They've got an interim coach who actually has won a couple of big games. Here's Coach Hoiberg being asked, how different are the Buckeyes now from when you saw them a month ago? Yeah, I mean, you can always use, you know, we always go back and watch uh, the first games as they have as well. And you just try to figure out uh, adjustments. Uh, you know, their defensive coverages for the most part have been uh, pretty much the same. It's hard to really flip, um, you know, in a short amount of time when you have a change in the middle of a season. And it's, uh, it's a team that is playing a lot of guys right now. You know, they're young guys, they're getting a lot of minutes and they're taking advantage of it and, and they're playing very well. Um, you know, listen, I, I think the absolute world of Chris Holtman, I, he's, he's a good friend. Uh, you know, this is a tough business sometimes. And, you know, Chris is, uh, did some really good things at his time as, at Ohio State, and he's going to be on his feet in no time, you know, leading another program. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, these things happen in this business. It's happened to me. And, uh, you know, you just you, you stay strong, you, you bounce back, and, um, you know, he'll be, he'll be back at the top in no time and uh, you know with them again what, what I've seen right now when you go through something like that just the emotions uh, that your team goes through and you know again these guys I've been really impressed with how they've handled all that and uh, and playing their best basketball the season right now. 
That's what you want. Play your best basketball now. Yeah, they certainly. Ha when they put it all together, it's just they're so good. They're they're really really good, and we it all starts on the defensive end. But I just I think with the way that I mean we were just sitting here talking about rink mass, but how many times does somebody else go off that? It just who pick your poison with right. who you're going to try to slow down if you're talking about the opposing scout. So um, you know, I hope I, I would imagine Rink has another big because a lot of times it's about the matchup, right? And so I bet we'll see if he can have a good one on the road. But well, Sunday it was Juwan, mm -hmm. right? Had a big game against Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. Yeah, and then the week the Indiana game, Casey had a great first half, and, and Jamarcus, then, and then Jamarcus took yeah. over in the second half. So that, that's to, to your point. Uh, you mentioned Rink. He he had that big game against the Buckeyes. He struggled a little bit the last couple of games. The coach was asked about Rink's struggles on the offensive end. Yeah, I mean Rink's going to be fine. He's he's shooting the ball very well in practice, and you know we we have we've struggled shooting the ball as a group for you know these last uh, these last couple of games, and I'm confident we'll get it going again. You know the thing that I've been really pleased with our team. You know, since February 1st, we've had the number one defense in the country. I think second is Houston. So, you know, we've really been doing a good job on that end of the floor, keeping ourselves in games when the ball hasn't gone to the basket. And it's pretty rare in this business when you shoot under 40% and you win a game by 18 points. So I think that shows the commitment uh, that our guys have shown on that defensive end. And it's a matter of time. Our guys are too good as shooters. Um, you know, we'll get that lid off and hopefully we play a complete game on both ends of the floor and, and we have a chance to be pretty dangerous if we do that. That to me is what's been really impressive about this group is we're sitting here talking about how they've won by 15 or more points the last four games in these Big Ten matchups but but it's it's almost like a different looking win every time. Their Indiana the offense was clicking, clicking. but then there's a couple wins at Penn State. It wasn't at all. It was kind of a little bit ugly. But the way that they just find ways to win, no matter what the matchup calls for. But Rink, despite Rink maybe not racking up the points, he still provides so much of a um, emphasis for opposing teams and the way that he passes. And a lot of times when the ball movement is is going really good for this team, even if Rink doesn't get the assist, he might get that hockey assist where it's. He makes a really good pass, and then somebody makes another good pass right after that. So it's just he's such a big part of the way that this offense flows. So even if he's not scoring, he's still a big part of making it go. And, um, again, just the rhythm that they get into on the offensive end. Isn't it, isn't it something that back-to-back -back years, the, the post guy has been the team leader in assists? Coach Hoiberg, that's what he wants, you know. And, and I asked him about this, and I... I I forget the guy's name who he played with that he saw when he, he was a player and it was such a difference maker that since then he's really made an effort to get those big guys that can post or that can pass the ball, that can see the floor well, that can um, you know do those things because it, it does, it's, it makes things so difficult. And coming off those ball screens, especially when you have a shooter like Casey too, the way that Casey can play off those guys too, uh, it's... Yeah, it just is a huge difference maker. And so he, it's been something that he's tried to emphasize with a lot of his teams. I remember watching at, at, when, at Iowa State when he was there, he always had a, a big guy that could pass. Right. You know, so. George Nang yeah. was one of those guys that did it for him. But that's why the getting rank was such a huge pickup last spring. Because Derek was so valuable, and I kept saying all last year, I mean, Casey was getting all the love. I'm like, well, Derek's setting him up, the, his ability to pass on the back cuts and all those type of things and set him up and to be able to replace Derek with Rink, who I think scores more than Derek did. He's a better shooter than Derek Walker was last year. Yeah, and, and maybe Derek was a little bit more physical in the way that he scored, um, but I think Rink provides the the – where he can stretch the floor a little bit more. and um, But, yeah, he's um, unbelievable. And we'll see. He's got another year left, right? You think he comes back? I think there's a chance he comes back. I think there's a really good chance he comes back. He may go kick the tires and see what he can get, like, on an international team or whatever. But, I mean, I think he's having a good time here. I think that, he likes it here. That's what's so exciting, too. And, and I want to be all in on this season and be excited about this team. But there's a lot of this team that, Potentially could be back next year. Would you? Do you think? Did we try to guess back in the season began who would be the leading scorer on this team? I think we did, but I don't remember what we said. 
I'm not sure that I would have picked Rink. I think I might have picked like Bryce to be the I, leading scorer. I know we did, but I can't even remember. I don't remember. remember who we said. Now it's so hard to go back and think, oh, I know I said this because <laughs> yeah. look at all the different guys that have contributed. I'm just looking up their total total record. Now that's just conference only. Let me get the difference. I, I think I would have said Bryce. Actually, Maybe Kase. I, I would think Kase Bryce. Well, Kase has actually jumped rink in the last couple of games. Kase now, Bryce Kase rink would have been probably the three that we debated. Yeah. I would think. Kase's one right now after the last, and then Rink and Bryce are tied for second at twelve point nine points per game. Rink scored a bunch at um, Bradley, right? Bradley, where he did. He was yeah. second team All Valley. At so Bradley. he 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 was. We I think we knew he was capable of putting up the points, but um, I. Probably would have thought Bryce or Casey would have been the leader. One thing that I'm not sure you and I have even talked about, and Coach got asked about it today. I didn't pull the clip. But he was asked about what's been the key to your free throw shooting. Nebraska's a really good free throw shooting team, 76%. I think they're second in the league behind Wisconsin. I looked. It's improved, I think, 12 points. From last year? It was like 64 to 70. 76 yeah. right now. Yeah, I mean, and that's a key thing in close games. That's going to win you a lot of close games. I think it has this team. Well, I think... Bryce Williams is an unbelievable free throw shooter. He he has been. He came here shooting the free eighty four percent. Yeah, and he was right around the ninety for a while. And then Rink is a good free throw shooter. I think Casey sometimes at, last year would would hurry, and so he was not as good of a free throw shooter last year as you thought. As he is now. But I think he got into a better rhythm. I think it's probably something that he really focused on, and. Um, who else would have, who else would shoot a bunch of free throws? What who shoots Casey, the most free throws? Well, Case um, Bryce, and he's at eighty four percent. Yeah, so that's perfect, and he has the ball in his hands a lot. Yes, Case is at ninety, and then Rink is at eighty three percent. I mean, that's tough. Late in games, if you're behind the Huskers, who are you going to foul? Yeah, it, it's tough. So, but I think till you add to sixty five. I don't know what he was last year, but it's probably an improvement. Probably, probably. But you add two guys that are really good free throw shooters that take a lot of pride in that, that have made it an emphasis as a part of their game. I, I asked Bryce Williams about this, and he said, you know, that was one thing that his dad, whose dad was a great basketball player, told him, free throws are free. So why would you not take advantage of that? So he's, it's been a big part of, of him being, making that an emphasis of his game for since he's, I think since he's been playing basketball and rink, great shooter so and then I think the guys that I think Sam Hoiberg's percentage is up because I did I did a deep dive on this I looked it up I think some of the guys that were um on the team last year they have improved and then you bring in some elite free throw shooters and then that's where it jumps that's a big jump 12 points in a, in a year I haven't looked at these real closely until now CJ Wilcher from the line is 30 of 32 and he's improved. Yes. He wasn't as – you should look up his free throw percentage from a year ago because it was not as good either. Cause I, so I think, yeah, it's been um, kind of a two-part deal where the guys that were a part of the team last year made it an emphasis and really worked on it and concentrated on it. And then the guys that they brought in came in good free throw shooters. All right, I'm getting close to finding CJ's numbers from last year. I may need another second here. Um, but, yeah, I, I think – I'm pretty sure his has improved significantly, and as as um, as has Casey's, because you just think, you in your mind you're like, oh, that's an elite shooter. That okay, they should be automatic from the free throw line. CJ's first year here in Lincoln, he shot 63 percent last year, 64 percent, and now he's up to 94. Yeah, see, he's a big part of it. And then, uh, what was Casey's? Are you do you have last year's percentage yep. pulled up? Yep. What was Casey's percentage last year? All right, where are you? I lost him. Hold on, I'll find him. Okay, Casey, last year, well, he was good. Uh, last year he was 86, 87 oh, percent. Okay. He's at 90, so he's a little bit. Okay. A little bit. But higher. I think that improved later in the season. Um, but. Jamarcus, markedly better from the line. Last year, 38 oh, percent. Jamarcus from the line. Now he's 75, which is what you need because yes. he's going to have the ball a lot. So I, who was it that told me that a goal is to be about for a team is to be about 74, 75? Yeah. So I think that's, that's what Coach you know, Herbert so, wants. So Jamarcus keeps them right there in that percentage. Yeah. Hey, what else, Auto Family? Your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back to preview men's basketball, baseball, and softball. We'll have that for you next. 
for farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Woodhouse GMC is bringing you more for the new year. With every new GMC purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. Plus, with our current finance offers going on now, you'll save even more. Receive up to $6,500 off MSRP on the 2024 GMC Sierra 1500 SLT. Woodhouse GMC, we are professional grade. With approved credit, must have 2010 or newer trade-in to qualify. $299 doc fee due at signing. Offer expires March 4th, 2024. See dealer for details. Don't miss out on limited-time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Woodhouse Lincoln wants to redefine your driving experience with our stunning lineup of Lincoln vehicles. Lease a 2023 Lincoln Nautilus for $499 a month for 39 months, 10,500 miles per year. Come visit us in store off 114th and Giles Road or online anytime at woodhouselincoln.com. With approved credit, security deposit waived, $1,500 down payment plus first payment and $299 dock fee due at signing. Offer expires 229-2024. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, 
solutions for every field. We've got another busy weekend full of Husker sports, full slate of games, including the home opener for Husker softball, lots of postseason implications for Husker hoops, and another four game series on the road for Nebraska baseball. Let's get you set for all of it, talking to the guys that will be calling the action right here on the Huskers radio network. And let's start with Nebraska baseball because they're up first on the schedule. We welcome in Ben McLaughlin who will be on the call for us. Well, coming off the weekend at Grand Canyon, the Huskers take three out of four. What were you most impressed with out of that four game series? Um, I think there's a lot of positive takeaways. You know, you're never sure what you're going to get on the road, specifically this early on against a really good team. Um, Grand Canyons, they were undefeated. They won their league three years in a row. Uh, so it's a really caliber baseball team that we saw. Um, I think the thing I was maybe most impressed with was the resolve, particularly what you saw on Sunday. Um, you're up 8-1 to one on getaway day, a team that you handled pretty easily the first two games. They bounce back with a close win on Saturday. You're up 8-1 to one, thinking you had the series wrap up. Next thing you know, boom, it's 8-8 eight to eight after the Grand Slam. And all the momentum's on their side. There's a lot of emotion in that series, and they didn't have a lot of life. And then the way Nebraska was able to score um, late in that game to take the lead, I think, is what impressed me. And I think the reason why it impressed me, and I think it's maybe more impressive than any particular outing or uh, Josh Karen hitting three home runs, is this is something that they can take with them you know, throughout the course of the year, you know, that mental toughness, being the toughest team in the country, something that Will Bolt, you know, preaches to his guys to actually see that manifest on Sunday was really nice. What have you, what have been your big takeaways? What have been the big differences that you've seen so far this season with Rob Childress managing the pitching staff? I think just the attitude of the pitchers, you know, I think, um, you know, Rob, now that he's kind of officially taken things over, has added a layer of seriousness, a lot added a layer of competitiveness to the guys. And I think with that is a layer of, of expectation. You know, those guys know if their number's called, they're, they're expected to do a job. Um, you know, occasionally we've already seen this year, uh, it's pretty common practice where the pitching coach comes out and all the infielders come in. There's been three or four times this year where he'll throw the stiff arm out <laughs> to the infielder and said, nope, this is going to be a one-way conversation to the pitcher. And I think that just kind of exemplifies kind of how he is. And I think um, you're never quite sure how young guys are going to take that message but I think our guys have done a really good job of listening because he's one of the more respected pitching coaches in all of America and I think he's done a really good job with the staff particularly pounding the zone and with the attitude so yeah you can certainly see differences already. So going into another four game series you expect the pitching rotation to be the same to look the same? Yeah I think so it, it, it's a delicate balance when you're throwing these four game series out there because you go there's a lot of innings it's a lot of arms that need to go out there and pitch and to see Drew Christo pitched the way that he did his first start last week against Grand Canyon was was great to see he's going to be all the guys but Drew specifically are going to be as good this weekend their numbers are pretty crazy when you look at them they're batting almost 370 as a team and they've got some thump they like to steal bases so it's going to be a big challenge for our guys but I think overall from what you've seen with the staff you're, you're pretty pleased with what happened last weekend and hopefully they can replicate it this weekend. Okay let's dive into that a little bit more. College of Charleston off to a 7-0 and start to the season as you've prepped for these guys. What are you seeing out of them? What do they look like for the Huskers going into this weekend? Well the numbers are what they are. Uh, I think the competition certainly is going to ramp up a, a degree or two with Nebraska coming to town but um, you know, you, you, every once in a while in football, you'll see a, a completion percentage or an average yards per game from a quarterback, and it just, you, you always kind of have that caveat, but it sticks out when it sticks out, and that's certainly what it looks like with Charleston. I think to me is how balanced they are offensively. They'll, they'll hit some homers. They've got a lot of guys with doubles. They'll steal bases, um, and it's just the consistency that they have, but their, their pitching numbers are just as good. You know, they're pitching to under a two ERA right now as a team, which is, which is outstanding. Um, they ran through Youngstown State last weekend, but um, I'm pretty confident with where our guys are, you know, with the confidence level. Um, it's going to be a good competitive series. I think D1 Baseball put out a, a rankings of all their non-Power 5 uh, schools, and Charleston's right there in the top five. So it's going to be a competitive series. GCU is a competitive series. I, I think both teams are probably pretty, pretty similar with, uh, with skill level. When you start talking, I know it's early, but when you start talking about what you do in the non-conference to lead to what you do, maybe setting up for postseason, what do the Huskers need to do here in the non-conference? It's huge. I mean, I think our baseball fans and, and Will Bolt in particular learned that his first year as an assistant. You know, Nebraska was 29 and 30 that year. Uh, they were one win away from being 500, and at that in that particular season, their RPI was in great shape. They were in the high 20s, low 30s with their RPI, so they were already there. But um, in terms of resume builders, you know. Games like Baylor, Oklahoma, Texas Tech,
Grand Canyon. These are all games that matter and that we end up circling back to, you know, when May rolls around or the conference tournament rolls around, like, man, that was a great series for us. It really would have been nice to have that one. So you can't look in the rearview mirror. You really got to take advantage of these opportunities. And I think the, team, the, the players that have been on this team for a few years kind of understand that and how important that is. And I think it was a hard lesson for our coaches to learn in the COVID year, too, when they ended up with the conference-only schedule and having to go down to Arkansas for the regional. So uh, they're hard lessons to learn, but hopefully they, they learn them and are, are happy with where they're at RPI-wise. And I think they'll be in decent shape at the end of the year. Giving Greg Sharp the weekend off this weekend. Yeah, he's tapping out after two, which is the, <laughs> which is the veteran move. But, uh, yeah, myself and uh, David Gustafson will make his, his Husker debut on the call. So, ironically enough, my first series was in Charleston, and his will be too. So, it'll wow. be fun. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to it again. Uh, first pitch for the first game of the series coming up Thursday, 1 o'clock. You guys will be on the call coming up 1230 pregame. So, we'll look forward to the call. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, let's talk men's hoops now. They hit the road again at Ohio State. Kent Pavelka is having zero fun calling the games of this team this season. Yeah, I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of it, you know. No, I is, I'm just having a ball. Well, this men's basketball team is doing things that we haven't seen done in a long time. But you look at the last four games, they've won four Big Ten games in a row by at least 15 points. From your perspective, uh, you know, what's gone into these last four games and, and why they've been able to pull away and dominate some of these opponents? Well, I think they went through a period after beating Purdue. You, you lose at Iowa and then you lose at Maryland and you kind of have to regroup and rededicate yourself to the number one premise, which is you got to play with your hair on fire on defense. And, I mean, Nate, Nate Lenzer has just done a great job. And these guys are talented, just talented enough that they, and they play just the right way that they're really good. But it starts on the defensive end. I mean, uh, and, and this last game was a great example of that. You know, people say they weren't, weren't very good offensively. Yeah, they really were. I mean, the measure of if you're good offensively, in my opinion, is not whether or not you're scoring, it's whether you get a good shot, you know. So, so my point being that they're they're executing on offense, they're getting good shots on defense, they're playing uh, a brand at, at a level that these Big Ten teams can't handle a lot of them. And so, you know, if you if you combine getting defensive rebounds and not turning it over with those two things, uh, there's your there's your formula. So got the huge relief at Indiana, finally got that Big Ten road win. At Ohio State, you just talked about Ohio State's playing really good basketball, too. Nebraska did beat Ohio State earlier in the season. What needs to happen? What did they do at Indiana that worked well, and what do they need to do against Ohio State to maybe uh, get back-to-back -back road wins? Well, it was the first one minute of the game against Indiana. And, and, and I mean, they established when the ball was thrown up, uh, they had Indiana on, on its heels, and uh, they established who was going to be more physical. I mean, there was just no question about it. So it was the start of the game, and that's got to happen on Thursday night too. You know, uh, you, you don't want to you don't want to encourage anybody, and and so they they just kind of set the ground rules of how it's going to be played, and and and, and who's the boss. So I think that's the, the main thing that's got to happen, number one. And then, you know, you just got to sustain that. I know I'm talking generalities here, but um, if, you, if you think about just the playing maniacally, and like I, like I put it earlier this year, it's, it, it, there's a relentlessness to uh, 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 formula to, to win. And, and when you are relentless, you inevitably – get inside your opponent's head and i think that's what's been happening you know minnesota didn't want much of nebraska you know not very far into that basketball game um so i think that's the formula you know you just gotta you gotta get inside your opponent's head and re they, get them get them to the point where they don't want to play anymore fred hoiberg is he the big 10 coach of the year that game i we, I told Jake, and we talked about it on the air before the game on Sunday, the winner of this game is the Big Ten Coach of the Year, Ben Johnson or, or Fred Hoiberg. That simple, in my opinion. He gets, he gets credit. He's Coach of the Year. When you consider what the expectations were and what you know, the media in preseason expected out of this team compared to what they've achieved, barring a flat-out collapse here in the last three games, that's a, it's a no-brainer. 
All right, Kip Pavelka, as always, uh, it's a treat to chat with you, and we'll look forward to hearing your call of uh, hopefully a couple more wins coming up Thursday, starting Thursday at Ohio State, 5.30, 4.30 pregame, and then also 5.30 tip as well on Sunday, final home game of the season inside PBA. KP, thanks for your time. Thanks, Jessica. All right, let's talk a little Husker softball now. We welcome in the voice of the Husker softball team, Nate Roar. Let's go back to last weekend and a really heartbreaking Friday. A couple of walk-offs go the wrong way, but then you get a big win over Oregon. And just the way that they battled against a ranked UCLA team and then um, got to feel like there's some positives. The team felt there were some positives to take away and, and build off of from last weekend. Absolutely. I mean, they, you know, they lose those two games on Friday to San Diego State and then uh, UCLA. But, I mean, Nebraska very well could have won both, and you feel like you should have won at least one of them. I mean, you take an 8-4 lead uh, to the bottom of the seventh inning against UCLA uh, in a tournament that is essentially a home tournament for them. Uh, and then Nebraska made a couple of mistakes in, in the seventh inning, and UCLA capitalized and, and took some momentum, and, and it snowballed from there in a five-run seventh that they won. So the Huskers did a lot right, played really well. You felt like the three losses, they could have won any of those three games. They had a lead over Utah, a nationally ranked team that was in the series last year, uh, and then the Friday game. So you felt like not only were they two and three, but they weren't that far from four and one or possibly five and up. Wow. Well, moving forward uh, with the pitching rotation and the pitching staff, we saw Emerson Cope last weekend, too. Uh, what do you expect? What can we expect to continue to see from this pitching staff and how they, uh, I guess, match up against teams moving forward? Well, I think how this pitching staff will be used is going to be one of the great stories. Uh, for the next 30-some games of the schedule because I, I think that we're still trying to define roles uh, very much for this team. Uh, I think Sarah Harness asserted herself as somebody that, that can be relied on to start and pitch pretty well. Kaylin Kinney had kind of an up-and-down weekend, both in games that she started and out of the bullpen. Um, Caitlin Olenski. Pitch pretty well. She's a freshman, very spinny, very crafty, tough uh, for teams to pick up on. And, and you mentioned Emerson Cope. And, you know, coming into the year, I don't know that a lot of people thought Emerson Cope would pitch a whole lot for this team. Uh, but with Jordy Ball's injury, she has been moved into the line of fire, essentially. And, and she has a good confidence about her, throws a lot of strikes, comes right after hitters. So, you know, there, there's a little something different in all four pitchers, and, and that is going to be something that Nebraska tries to utilize and, and tries to have, uh, you know, how they use pitchers in games complement so that they maximize the effectiveness of people. So, uh, for instance, Sarah Harness and Kaylin Kitty's stuff really contrasts. So... There will be a lot of games where if Sarah pitches the first half of it, Kalen pitches the second or vice versa. So uh, it, it's just something to track. It, you know, it, Nebraska really hasn't had a full staff like this uh, really in my memory. Uh, and I know the Husker coaching staff is still learning how they can maximize what they get out of all four of these pitchers. Great stuff there. All right, coming up this weekend, Big Red Invitational, Wichita State and Missouri. Missouri, another ranked team that the Huskers will face. They're coming in at number 14 uh, this weekend. Wichita State, there's a lot of history there. Let's start with Wichita State because that's the first team on the schedule Friday at 530. Uh, what can we expect to see from the Shockers? What does this matchup look like? Uh, Wichita State always has a really good lineup, uh, a lot of good depth in their lineup. Uh, Addie Bonnard. Uh, an All-American, uh, Beatrice native, really sets the pace for them. Uh, but Wichita State, Christy Breadbender has done such a good job uh, with that program and, and making it one of the best mid-major programs in the country. They're uh, a regional caliber team, and so 
Uh, you know, Nebraska had trouble with them last year. Wichita State beat Nebraska three times, twice in Wichita, then in the first round of regionals before the Huskers ultimately ended the Shocker season last year in the NCAA regionals uh, in the semifinal to go to the regional final. So uh, these teams have seen each other plenty. They know plenty uh, about each other. Um, there, there's a ton of history between uh, these two schools. So uh, I, I think the Wichita State matchup's going to be a nice test for this team. And then, you know, Missouri's been the surprise team in college softball. They went from not even getting votes in the national poll uh, in the preseason to being ranked in the top 10 in a week. And, and, and so the Tigers have really uh, put it together here in the first month of the year and, and, and have been one of the great stories in college softball. So uh, they'll certainly challenge Nebraska and, and, you know, typical SEC team with power and speed and some good pitching depth. And so the Huskers are going to get really tested this weekend, no question. It all gets started against Wichita State Friday at 5.30 and then a doubleheader on Saturday with Wichita State and Missouri at 1.30 and 4 and Sunday 1.30 uh, against Missouri to close things out. And of course, Nate Rohr will be on the call for all of the action. Nate, thanks for your time. Can't wait to hear you guys, uh, hear you on the call this weekend. Thank you very much, Jessica. Yeah, uh, me and Maddie Fowler Burkhardt will have all the action. We're excited. All right, again, we have all the action of all the sports coming up all weekend long on the Huskers Radio Network and our great radio uh, affiliates, Huskers.com and the official Nebraska Huskers app. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at Woodhouse.com. We're back with more of the show coming up after this. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Don't miss out on limited-time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting-edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. 
It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealers, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to be a part of the program. Art in Los Angeles said, Greg, speaking of the best players on the basketball team, my pick is Sam Hoiberg. He shows the most hustle and gets the team all fired up just because he's not the leader in scoring. That should not matter. He is my pick for the best athlete of the month even. Oh, okay, Art. Yeah, uh, Sam has got a ton of people who love his game. He, he fires his team up, and usually when he gets into the game, something good happens. There was a game, might have been the Indiana game, where he scored two points. They get two free throws. But what they do, they keep a, a list for each player called plus-minus what what's your team doing when you're on the court are they better when you're on the court or not as good his plus minus in that game remember scoring two points was plus 17 the huskers were 17 points better than indiana in that game when when sam was on the court that's pretty impressive stuff let's check the scoreboards big 10 women's games uh, ohio state who has already wrapped up the league title they lead michigan with about two minutes to go 62 47 uh, that is in Columbus tonight. Penn State with 21 seconds to go on top of Purdue, 90 to 86. The Nittany Lions trying to make an NCAA tournament. This will be their 17th win if they hang on up up four, 90 to 86 with 21 seconds to go. And at top of the hour, it's Iowa and Minnesota set to play there on the men's side of things tonight in the Big Ten. You've got. Northwestern leading Maryland, 55 to 47, 540 left to go in that game. That would be a nice road win for the Cats. If you're hoping for Oscars to keep moving up the seeding chart in the Big Ten tournament, we really want Maryland to come back and win this game. 8 o'clock on BTM Minnesota and Illinois set to play. Also back on our text line, Roger said, I really love the way both the men's and women's teams are trending late in the season. The best games are in front of each of those teams from my perspective, as always, go Big Red. Roger, we appreciate that. And I, I agree. I think, I think both teams are playing some really good basketball right now. Let's hope that continues tomorrow night for the men. The women will wrap up their regular season Sunday at Illinois uh, for a game at 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. The men tomorrow night, 5.30. Again, really early start time for the Huskers with the pregame coverage of 4.30. So our network coverage tomorrow, you just heard Jessica talk to Ben, Kent, and Nate. Husker Baseball along some of these Husker Network stations tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, 12.30 for pregame coverage, game 1 of 4 back in Charleston, South Carolina against undefeated College of Charleston. They are 7-0. and And then the men's game with Ohio State, 4.30 pregame, 5.30 for first pitch uh, for that game, or for, for the tip-off time tomorrow night for the Huskers and the Buckeyes. All right, 402, keep those texts coming. Love them, 402-413. 
2400. Step aside and work our last break of the night in and then wrap up tonight's show next. Are you ready? Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Huskers. It's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. You know, folks, we're, we're about to enter a new era of college football with a 12-team playoff uh, that will take place in the fall. We're leaving the old the format of four teams, which has been in place for about 10 years well, the powers to be, the, uh, the, the talk about the college football playoff and the future of it, they're already putting together a 14-team model. So next year's 12. We'll go from 4 to 12. Now they're talking about a 14-team playoff model that would start in 2026. So you'd have two years of the 12-team format and then go to 14. And here's the proposal that is being laid out uh, by the powers to be, and certainly the Big Ten carries a big stick in this conversation, that the SEC and the Big Ten would get three automatic qualifiers into the 14-team playoff. So six of the 14 would be guaranteed to be Big Ten or SEC. The ACC and the Big 12 would each get two automatic qualifiers, and the group of five, the highest ranked group of five, that would be conferences like the Mountain West, the Sun Belt, the AAC, um, I'm sure I'm missing one, Conference USA, they would be guaranteed one spot. That would leave three spots for at large and one for Notre Dame. Dep the, three would be dep the three would include Notre Dame. If Notre Dame is not good enough to be in that, then you'd have three at large positions going. So what's, what's going on here is you've got the Big Ten and the SEC throwing their weight around a little bit and saying we, we, we need to have three guaranteed spots in the playoff every year from these two conferences where the ACC and the Big 12 only get two in every year. So uh, how about that? It took us a long time to go from four to 12, and now they're talking about in two years' time 
going from 12 to 14. I, I guess I don't hate it. Um, you, know, you look at the, the FCC is going to be a 16-team league with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas, and the Big Ten with the four Pac-12 schools coming on board would be an 18-team league. So you know, those are big leagues. Um, but, you, you know, the ACC and the Big 12 aren't small, and, but they're only getting two automatic qualifiers in this particular thing. But I, my guess is, because all the power right now does sit with the Big Ten and the SEC, this is probably where we're headed to go uh, with this thing. But finances have not been worked out. Again, the Big Ten and the SEC are probably going to throw their weight around and want more money out of this deal than they're currently getting. Um, it will be more weighted that way. The Group of Five conferences uh, will get a certain cut, but then obviously because of the automatic qualifiers for the Big Ten and the SEC, they're going to get more of a cut uh, moving forward. So hold in there. I, uh, again, this is where being a member of the Big Ten for Nebraska pays off. This is a, this is a great thing. Um, you've got you're – you're in a league that carries a lot of weight right now. And if, you're, if we're still in the old Big 12, you, you wouldn't have – that much weight and folks in the chat room are going why not why not 16 why 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 go 14 why not go to 16 and, and it might it, it just might I think with 14 you can still work some buys into the to the thing and maybe even double buys so that the top four teams much like what we we're talking in hour one about the Big Ten basketball tournament having double buys I think you could get double buys in the uh, college football playoffs as well thus bettering the chances of having one of those really good top four teams making it to the uh, national championship game. So we'll, we'll see a lot of discussions going on right now about the future of, of the college football playoff. So two years, it took us 10 years to go from four to 12, and we're going to have 12 for two, and then we're going to jump it up to 14 teams uh, moving forward. So SEC Big Ten playing some hardball. I can't blame them. Uh, they've got a lot of juice in this whole thing, so we'll see how, how this thing all plays out. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. All right, again, busy sports day tomorrow here on the network. Husker Baseball at one, game one of four at College of Charleston. Ben and David Gustafson, who works at our uh, Columbus affiliate, will have the call this weekend in Charleston. So 12.30 for pregame coverage. And then Husker men's basketball, 4.30 for pregame, 5.30 for tip-off in Columbus. And Kent Pavelka, Jake Muehlheisen on the call for that game tomorrow night. So that means no sports highly for us tomorrow. But we'll be back Friday night after the baseball game, which is slated to start at 3 central time. We might get on a few minutes late. but And also there is a pretty good chance of rain in Charleston on Friday. So there's a shot that maybe they get rained out anyway. But we'll be back on Friday night uh, to give you some more uh, fun Husker news headed your way. Thanks to Russ and to Henry for steering the ship here tonight. What a great show, huh? We talked a lot of a lot of different things. We heard from Jeremiah Searles, a little football chatter in hour number one. Heard some comments from Fred Hoiberg from his press conference earlier today and then previewing some of the Husker events coming up with Ben McLaughlin, Kent Pavelka, and Nate Rohr. Have yourself a great night. Enjoy the Husker games tomorrow. We'll be back with you Friday night with another edition of Sports Nightly here on the Oscars Radio Network. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today. 
and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate.